Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the People's Full Gospel Church live stream. We're so happy you could join us this morning, and tonight, uh, today, <laughs> my last stream was at night, today we're going to be opening the service with our children's song we're doing uh, Deep and Wide, and Esri's going to help me. You ready, Esri? Yeah. All right, here we go. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. For you, for me, Jesus died, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. For you, for me, Jesus died, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. One more time. And deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Nice job. Woo! When Jesus called a, a little child and stood the child in the midst and said, if you can't receive the kingdom as a little child, then you're not going to be able to enter in. He didn't want it to be complicated. He didn't want it to be restricted to people with just deep theological understanding. And um, I think it's great that no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter how much you're able to read or study or understand or how little, God is there for you. And he wants to bless you in everything you do and everywhere you go. And the only thing we need to do in response is to receive and to give him thanks. So this morning we're gonna start our service with a song that says, Blessed Be Your Name. We want to give back our thanks and our blessing to him. Blessed be 
in that because God is always faithful and in times like we find ourselves in this last few months people have had to go to God those that, that know to do so and maybe some that haven't for a long time and say God we're in trouble and we need your help and we found that God is faithful because he never changes he never loses control of the earth or its people his people simply because situations and circumstances change. And we want to remember him for his faithfulness. Faithful one, so
our hope, especially in times of trouble, but at all times. Just a few announcements to uh, remind you of this morning. If you have uh, prayer requests and you would like to forward them to us, you can always do that during the week or at any time, but during the service time, if you think of something or you something's heavy on your heart, you can um, type it in on the text box on, box on the stream if you have the ability to do that, or you can text it by phone or even phone it in. And we don't want just the prayer request. There's been a lot of things God's been doing lately and good things that have uh, been answers to these prayers that we've been lifting up. And so if you want to send along a praise report, that would be in order because I think we need to mix our, our new requests with our, with our answered prayers and realize that God is on the move. He is doing wonderful things. We are also having prayer meeting, um, and which is uh, set up so that you can either phone in or join us by video, and that's Wednesday at 7 p.m. If you want to be a part of that, uh, just let us know. We need an email to forward you the link to that meeting. And continue uh, to thank you for the generous uh, giving and uh, support for the work here locally. Um, and uh, if you uh, want to be a part of that, we have a, uh, an e-transfer set up on the, our website, but also you can, you can mail it by, by regular postal service or if you want to drop something in the mailbox here at the church building, we encourage you to phone us ahead or give us some kind of an indication that you are dropping something in the box. Other than that, if that becomes problematic, we can also pick something up if it's needed. But God has uh, more than met the need during this time when I know it's been difficult for lots of people. Plan to resume limited in-person service at some point. The government has, has lifted its... Um, general ban on that and told us we can go back to uh, a form of, of public service with, with some restrictions. And um, the broadcast will continue when we switch over to that. And so you'll have the choice to either listen in from home or some of you may choose to join us here in the in the chapel in our, in our church service. And uh, we'll update you on the details as they become available as to when that'll happen and, and what will be required. So... Uh, the other thing that I have on my announcement list is next Sunday is Father's Day. I think we jumped the gun and announced it that it would be this week. That's okay. That just gives you one more week to get that special present for the person who is a father or a father figure in your world. You know, I'm, I'm just saying. But uh, it's a day when we want to honor just one component of the families that God has put together. And I know we're, we're not all in perfect situations. Sometimes those situations, are parts of it are, are damaged or broken. But that doesn't mean that we can't take days to, to celebrate what is working well. And uh, at the conclusion of the message today, uh, we will have a, a prayer time. If you're here this morning and uh, 
you've been following along, we're continuing with a, a series that we've been part of. But if, uh, if you haven't, if this is the first time you've joined us or you've only joined a couple of these, um, I'm also going to give just a little bit of a recap of what we've been dealing with before I start with today's message. Getting rid of a few computer components there. We had this wonderful uh, idea that, and it is a wonderful idea, that we can use tablets for, for music and got that all set up and Dan nicely helped me transpose my music and then we changed a chord and we synced it and in syncing it, it got rid of my transpose. And so it was a good thing it was a familiar song because <laughs> I had all the wrong chords. But uh, those are some of the, I'm just telling you a little something that I could have just pretended like it never happened that didn't cause a problem this morning, but it could in the days ahead. But we've been looking for the past few weeks at a Christian perspective and a Christian response to something that we call anxiety. Other people uh, call it worry, and there's a lot of different ways in which that um, comes up uh, in, our, in our world and in our lives. And uh, I think this... Most recent uh, situation, this pandemic, um, and all that has come out of that has certainly created a heightened anxiety for not just the people that are normally geared for that kind of a response, but also a lot of people, and I'm surprised, but I shouldn't be, people that I thought really were calm, cool, collected people, and some of them are starting to show those signs of, of um, anxiousness overtaking them. and. Anxiety, as we looked at it at the, at the outset and trying to define it, and I won't go through all of that, but anxiety, while it's related to fear, it differs in one very important aspect in that where fear sees a threat, anxiety imagines one. Mm. It creates scenarios to be more threatening uh, than they even really are or creates the, the fear of the threat before the threat actually comes to fruition and as we're looking at all of the things that are happening and the, the ways in which um, this pandemic has, has, has continually shifted and all of the dire predictions some of them um, with just cause and some of them maybe a little bit over the top all of that has been happening and we've been going around this kind of uh, feeling and when we considered this we looked at a portion uh, it's Philippians chapter 4, and I dealt with verses basically 4 till s to 7. We're going to look at verse 8 today a little bit. But Paul, in that, uses the word gentleness. Let your gentleness be evident to everyone. And Paul uses a Greek word, which the best English word we have to translate it, I guess. I don't know. I'm not a a translator, and I don't pretend to fully understand the Greek, but the Greek word was translated in English as gentleness. But I think that word can have varying meanings, as many English words do. But the specific meaning of the word that he uses there, when he says, let your gentleness be evident to all, we saw that this was defined as seasoned and mature, level-headed or reasonable, the opposite of panic. And when Paul was talking about dealing with the anxiousness of the people in his day and the problems they were dealing with were very different, but certainly the reactions were similar, he was saying, let that level-headed maturity show up instead of panic. And so let your gentleness be evident. And as we can put that forward, we also calm the others around us. And so we looked at how important it is to remember that the Lord is near. It's the latter part of that same verse. Because it tells us that we are never alone. And I think that's one of the things about anxiety that when it gets ramped up can really close the walls in on you. Is that feeling that you are all alone. Even in a crowd, when you are panicking, you are all alone. In fact, you'd be wanting to get out of that crowd to be alone, even though you feel alone in the crowd. 
And so there's, there's that sense that it separates us from all help, but God is near. We're never alone. Last week, we explored some practical steps to limit anxious feelings. And anxious feelings are feelings that everyone experiences at times, and they cannot simply be quelled by saying, calm down. You take a, a, a child that is having a tantrum or having a meltdown over something, and you just say, please calm down. Those words mean nothing. In fact, for adults, they mean nothing uh, in those times. And so there has to be more than just say, don't be anxious. And he does say that. He says, be anxious for nothing. He says, don't be anxious. But then he goes on to explain steps to make it so. So we saw that prayers, specific requests in particular, can break down our larger issues into smaller components, which we can then take and hand over to God and say, God, you said you're near. You said you're going to be there to help me. Help me with this. But being specific helps us not only give that over to God, but also understand when God does answer that the answer was from him and that if we can trust him for one part of this, we can trust him for more parts of it. And so it's a process. Um, and we finally, we noticed how Paul intentionally said that those requests should be made with thanksgiving. That's Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. That they should be made with thanksgiving because this is a recurring theme in Scripture that prayer and thanksgiving go together. The, there's only room in the heart for either thanksgiving or worry. And it's really hard to, to hold both of those at the same time. One will push the other out. So Paul says, when you are making your prayer requests, don't make them with that sense of panic, like, okay, I'm going to pray this prayer, but there's no way that I can ever see this being answered. Oh, God, oh, God, I'm sinking. I'm already sunk. I'm going down for the last time. I'll probably shoot up a prayer just in case. And sometimes that's all we can do. But Paul says, if you want to be intentional about this, pray and then give thanks. Give thanks for the things God has done in the past because that gives you assurance that he's still there. But also give thanks in advance for what he's going to do because it builds faith for the answers. And today in our final session in this series, we're going to look at how to access these principles and these tools more effectively. Um, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7, and I'm reading from the NIV. The peace of God, now that's not our self-created peace, or a peace in our world or in our personal circumstances, but a peace that depends totally on God. The peace of God is the first thing that he addresses in that verse. But that peace depends solely on the concept of God still being in control in this world and everywhere else. To be helpful, it must go beyond a concept. It must go deeper than information that me or anyone else um, could just say to you and then you could accept it on a mental level. Okay, I trust that guy. He probably knows what he's talking about. Maybe he doesn't. Um, where and how is the peace of God that Paul talks about here acquired? Well, we can ask for God's help, but some would question, is he really listening? Or is he really going to respond? And I'm not talking about unbelievers and people that don't really know God haven't encountered God. I'm talking about Christians can have these same questions. And if you don't have them, Satan will supply the question at the appropriate moment. Those little doubts that just creep in. Is anybody out there? Are they listening? And is he going to respond? I remember as I was thinking about this, a story that my, my aunt Anna told me. Um, this was a number of years ago and she and her husband, my Uncle Donnie, were up at their property. It was up uh, near Huntsville in that area. And it was uh, in the wintertime. 
And so while it was cottage country, a, a sort of a, a resort kind of area, they had a trailer on a lot just up from the, the lake, Sand Lake, up uh, past Huntsville. And they had gone up there. They parked the car at the bottom of the hill. They had to use snowmobiles to go up the hill, and they'd opened up the trailer for the weekend. And in the course of that, um, my Uncle Donnie took a sudden and fatal heart attack. He had a massive heart attack and died. And there she was, alone, and uh, very alone. And there were some neighbors that lived there year-round, so she went down and she was able to make a phone call, but it was going to be uh, upwards of an hour before the ambulance actually arrived. And so she went back and she just was there by herself. And as she stood there and um, she said, she said, I was just co coming apart emotionally and saying, what do I do, what do I do? And then she felt a hand on her shoulder. Now there was nobody there, but she felt a hand on her shoulder. And it was like, however God did this, he allowed this to happen. Now, it could have been my Uncle Donnie, it could have been an angel, it could have been God giving her a message, but she felt a hand on her shoulder, and all of a sudden this peace swept over her, and she heard in her spirit, in her mind, she doesn't know, she said, but it sounded like it was verbal language, I'm okay. And she said after that, she was perfectly calm. The rest of that time that she waited as they retrieved the body and took it back and even throughout the funeral and everything else that happened. And there's times when it's one thing to say the Lord is near. It's quite another thing to have a touch on the shoulder and know that he's there. Paul clarifies the difference in this God kind of peace, being different from all that we know in this world, in the latter part of the verse where he writes, which transcends all understanding. The peace of God which transcends all understanding. Then he goes on to say that the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds through Christ. And think about the heart in terms of of what we know that we know on a deeper level. I mean, we can know stuff. I know what the day is sometimes. I, uh, there's, there's things I know. And then there's things that you know. You just know it. And you don't need anybody to convince you of it, and, and words aren't enough to even explain it. I was teasing my three-year-old granddaughter the other day, and I was telling her that... Before I was a little boy, I was a turtle. And then I turned into a boy. And she looked at me. She gave me this kind of scrunched up, puzzled look and trying to process that statement. She says, no, you weren't. <laughs> Some things you just know, even when you're three years old. And Grandpa wasn't a turtle when, <laughs> before he was a little boy. Now. If the heart is where we know on this deeper level, then the mind is the area where we consider things and where we worry about whether we have it right. Or maybe I was a turtle after all. But the point is, God gave us access to a supernatural level of peace in order to guard both our hearts and our minds. Now, while the mind is given to us and it has a purpose and it is to consider things and weigh things and figure things out, it can sometimes come up with the wrong answer. Anxiousness always starts in the mind, but it can quickly affect the heart if we don't find a way to rein it in. And this brings us back to that question of how do we rein in anxious thoughts and feelings as a Christian? Now, as a psychotherapist, I was trained in methods that can be effective when helping an anxious person to cope and function better. Doctors may prescribe medications, if it's severe, with the aim to lessen the symptoms until they can be better managed. And there's nothing wrong with either of those. They have proven to be helpful, and if used responsibly, can, can be a great assist. 
There's nothing wrong with that approach. However, I have also seen God as having given answers to worry and anxiety from ancient times. And I have found that God's Holy Spirit is still the great counselor. And while I do my best to help people where I can, I always look to him for wisdom when I don't have enough. And I freely admit that I don't. When Jesus said, come to me, all you who weary, are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's found in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He was talking about rest from our worries, not just physical rest. He was talking about rest from the things that drag us down and weigh us down emotionally as well as physically, but mostly on that heart and spirit level. After Paul's exhortation to be anxious for nothing and his advice to take our troubles to God in prayer with thanksgiving, he finishes with one more method, if you want to call it that, of acquiring the peace that we so desperately desire and need. Let's look at Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. And again, uh, it's uh, the NIV, Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, so after he said all of this, he sums it up. He said, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. In the New King James Version, it says, meditate on these things. Another concept that is linked to prayer quite often in Scripture, just as thankfulness and thanksgiving is, is meditation. Prayer and meditation. Prayer and thanksgiving. Those things just seem to be linked up more often than uh, would be easy to dismiss. Meditation has been shown to calm an anxious mind, but in this context, it is more than just picturing a sandy beach somewhere, walking along with gentle waves, or whatever picture you can draw in your mind of a a physical, peaceful situation to put yourself in. Paul is specific about thinking on the positive attributes of God and the positive work of God in our lives. So it's not just thinking about something nice. It's thinking about God's work and God's goodness. There's a time to turn off the news channels and all the dire predictions and look at what is good in our lives, what is hopeful, what is praiseworthy. And over the last few months, I have tried to take note of that. With all that's going on, there are people that have stepped up and done admirable things, heroic things even. And those are the things that tell me that it's going to be okay. And I know we're not, we're not there yet. In our part of the world, it has started to calm down and be more peaceful, but there's other parts of the world where it is ramping up huge, and it is um, exploding in Latin America. There's a resurgence down in the States. I'm reading these reports, and I, I don't read them to get... Uh, more anxious, I read them to be aware of what everybody else is aware of, then I have to bring it back and I have to say, i got to calm my heart. And i got to look to say, God is good. And he's still in control. So we're going to conclude this message, this service time. Uh, We will have some prayer after, but at this point in the service, we're going to conclude by taking just a couple of minutes to do what Paul suggested I know you've been praying and I uh, would encourage you to be thankful as you pray. But he also suggests that we meditate on God's goodness. And you can take any portion of scripture. We're going to use the verse that uh, was in our text, um, Philippians 4 and 8. But I want you to get comfortable. And wherever you are, if you're, uh, you know, just 
If you're sitting in a chair, uh, just feel the, the chair beneath you. Feel the, the floor beneath your feet. Just let your body relax however you can. Close your eyes if you're able to. I know for some people that's hard to do or distracting, feels odd. But if you're able to do that, try to do that. Breathe in the breath of life. And then let that breath out. God is the God of too much, too much air, too much everything. He is a God who supplies. So just take the next couple of breaths. Say, God, you are so good. And I know this doesn't work for everybody, but if you're able to just push out all the distractions, if there's anything going on around you, maybe even the music itself is, is distraction for some. And if you're wired so that every little thing is a distraction, you may have to practice this while you walk or, or go for a run. But for those of you that can just in the quiet of this moment, try to push all that away while you consider this one verse. And I'm just going to point out a few parts of the verse. Whatever is true, let God be true and, and everyone else be a liar. God is true. He's never lied to us. He's never shielded us from the truth. Lord, we thank you that you are truthful, that we can trust in that. Whatever is, whatever is pure. We get so many mixed messages. God, we're tired of mixed messages. God, you give us that which is pure. Your love is pure. Your goodness. Whatever is lovely. God, you made this world and you made it so magnificently. And while it has been marred and damaged by us physically, but also by sin in general, it's still beautiful. Imagine what it will be like when it's restored to its full glory. Lord, we want to appreciate that you've given us so much. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Lord, bring to us those places in our lives when we shouted for joy, we praised you for your goodness, when we saw that you showed us a more excellent way. Help us to think about such things, especially when our minds are troubled. And once again, just breathe in that breath of life. Hold it for a moment, and then let it out. Every breath is a gift. Meditate on these things. Well, I don't know if that's something that's familiar to you, or possibly in a different context, or maybe it's new to you, or I, I'm not sure all the people that would be listening to this. But meditation on God's goodness has been recommended from earliest times. And I know they've expunged the God part of that and, and created a, a meditation which is more generic. And while I don't uh, discount that as being helpful, it's so much richer when we have a focus on God. It doesn't fix everything. It just let us lets us know that we're in good hands. The Lord bless you. We conclude the message. Father, we thank you for your times of goodness and mercy. We thank you that they never end. And we thank you for your word today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. At this time, if there's any uh, prayer requests, I'm getting the signal that no specific ones came in today. 
But I would encourage you to uh, pray for some of the people in parts of the world where uh, COVID-19 is actually increasing in cases and, and devastating countries like Brazil and other parts of Latin America. So many, I don't want to go through all of that. You can look at that or not look at it, but just know the world is in trouble. A lot of people are in trouble today. And we need to pray. We need to pray for a vaccine, for something that will, will stop the, the march of this disease. And we need to pray for the people. It's not just about a disease. If we make the disease the only thing we focus on, we forget there's people. Some of them very, very afraid. And we want to help them in any way that we can. So bring that to God in prayer. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your many answers to prayer. We thank you for a little girl that's not having to take dialysis because she was given a kidney transplant and, and, the, and the transplant was successful. And you provided for that family's financial needs during a, a very challenging time. We thank you for so many other tremendous answers to prayer. Even the small things, what seem small by comparison, are important to the people that are going through challenges. And we pray for the leaders of our countries, the leaders around the world that have to make hard decisions. We pray for the people that are in vulnerable situations because they're in countries that are perhaps poor or, or poorly equipped to deal with a medical emergency of this size and magnitude. We ask that you would supernaturally provide for those people that are suffering in other parts of the world. Lord, we ask that you would continue to help us to keep our eyes fixed on you in the midst of this storm. For you are the rock that gives us that firm anchor. We ask all of these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you for listening. God bless you.